Hi everyone, my name is Anne-Marie Band. Today is October the 30th, and this is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro platform. We are taking a look at SPY trying to make a bottoming formation here. I do believe we're going to have some sideways flow that is going to push up and then down and then up and then down and try to hold the floor here before the chart does whatever else it's going to do. And I really do not know where that is. Last week, we had a GDP number that came in incredibly high, 4.9%. That's not going to be, uh, not that, that is going to be adjusted. I'm just saying. So what we are looking at pre-market is a nice bounce, 413, right? And that actually happens to be the halfway slot between the top of this wave and the bottom. All right, that is the 50% range. So hang on two secs. Sorry about that. So let's take a look at the levels. We have old support that was pretty savage, but really this motion here could easily retrace under a lot of people being short, and it could go all the way up to this monthly level between 421 and heavier congestion at 418. So those are the levels that I'm watching over the next couple of days. Here's what we're looking at from underneath. Remember, let's go to the daily here so we can see how this is working out. Right now we have a gap. We have two candlesticks to the left, high, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, and here the gap up. So where is the floor? Listen, if we cannot hold the opening tick of the Globex, meaning the overnight, we need to step out of the way if we're trying to go long. We must step back and say, okay, if they're moving down, I'm in a downward trend, so it's trapped sellers that are going to say, I got to get out of here. So this is going to be that line in the sand, the 413 area that we can see on this Fibonacci of sorts, right? So that 50% range is what we're looking for. Do you want to buy the dips? You can. If it loses this 412, I would let it come back down, recapture the 412, and then use the distance between that fade and your move up as your stop. If it's too wide, stay out. Or you can go to a very tiny time frame and scalp it up. But it's not going to be a good sign if it loses this 412 because it's going to slip down another dollar. And then this purple line here gives us the majority of motion on the daily chart in this volume profile. All right. So there we have it. Let's go to Q's. Q's still in a flag pattern. What are we looking for? We've got a gap up. Oh my goodness. Hang on. All right, so here are the numbers. If we're looking at the daily, this is a fairly solid gap up. 345 is the low of the overnight. Um, it's moved quite a bit more than SPY, right? Breaking its opening tick, which is way up here, coming back to the support zone at 345.75. That's going to be that floor. Is resistance likely to show up here? It could. But if we've got a bounce in play, then it's going to hold this zone and punch up. Could you chase it after the open? Potentially. Um, I'd look at the five minute highs and see what the five minute low is and you can try a chase from there. People are going to try to buy this dip. Edward Jones came out in the overnight and said, here's why we think this is a buying opportunity. Every guy and gal that holds your money in an investment uh, space is going to say, hey, it's a good, don't worry about it. There's a natural pullback. Don't, don't, who are your jets? And, you know, they don't know. They truly don't know. All we can know is what price is doing. And price is saying, listen, I have higher lows for the last three days, but I still have lower highs. And that means I'm bounded in a tight price action event. So my thought is very high pops going to be shorting action, but you have to wait for it to move. And low bounces that hold at least 343, they're going to be buying opportunities. All right, so that's going to be the upper edge. If we break this space, 334 is the next ledge. But I do believe that we're going to try and get back into this flag pattern. Here's the thing, folks. If we cannot stay above the close of last week, there's a problem. And so we have to think about that if we're trying to pick the bottom. That's super important. Let's take a look at the ES. Really, really big deal um, in terms of what's going on here. Here is this motion. Let's do um, the Fibonacci. 
right? My Fibonacci's are super simple. Really, they've got GAN numbers attached to them, and that's really all I'm thinking about. This heavy congestion, people are going to try and pick a bottom. They absolutely are going to try and pick a bottom, and that's what we need to see here. Holding that 4140, if they lose it, they're going to flesh out this base. So if they lose it, stand to the side. If you're thinking about picking a bottom, when it recovers it, take the trade, and then the stop will be 4134. That's general mechanical motion, right? That gives you a 10-point spread. And so, you know, that's 500 bucks. So think about that carefully before you jump into the space. 4162 is a number that's very important in terms of overall motion. I see it all over the place. 4144 is that flat line that we want to see the charts hold. And again, if we cannot hold the close of the prior week at 4137 and some change, there's going to be a problem with buying pressure. All right, right now we see it. Pullbacks, buy zones into that opening range. As long as it holds 4144, you can pull really close to that and take it. If it drops 4144, then, you know, trim your, trim your position and get out of there, really. Now, are we going to be sideways? Yes, I do. I do believe we're going to be sideways. I do not believe price resolution is around the corner here. So look for chop. Same thing in the queues, moving in this zone and up. What's the low edge? 14,264. Look at the nice gaps. Higher highs? No. Lower highs, but higher lows. So if we break this trend and then hold the floor, we've got all the way to 14,570 on the horizon. I think a lot of things are going to come uh, down the pike in a very news-heavy week. We'll just have to see how it goes, folks. But again, this is a steep fade. Buyers going to try and hold the floor. But if they can't break higher, they're going to head lower. And if they can't break lower, they're going to head higher. So right now, they're in a big battle. And we just have to wait until this triangle or this pennant or whatever it is, it gets broken, right? And right now, this pole is very negative. So short squeeze could take us high but we could have no interest and then we could send it lower. And if that goes, you know, we've got ourselves some pretty much lower levels on the horizon. Okay. So that being said, uh, gold is uh, screaming to the north. So is Bitcoin, but these guys are at resistance zones, clear resistance zones in the near term. And so pullbacks should be buy zones. Listen, every time, gold has a formation like this, it gives it back every time. This is a trading vehicle. It is not something that you're going to hold on to and go, you know, this is going to be my be all end all to X, Y, or Z. It just is not. It is a financial trading vehicle. And so you've got to look at, look at it as that, because if you actually finally need gold, uh, you're not going to be able to pull it out of this. Okay. So just understand you've got the highs. Nothing wrong with peeling off some profit if you've got a long position in gold. When it pulls back, you can add to it again, all right? And notice, it was just here in May. So 2084 for this contract, and it moved almost $300 to the south. So use caution right there. Taking a look at oil, I feel the same way about oil. I think it's a very sticky sideways pattern. If the employment number comes in uh, weak, then this is going to collapse. Do we know that oil is eventually going higher? Yes, we do. It is. It absolutely is. Is it going higher right now? I don't know. But my suspicion is we have ourselves a fade, and that fade holds in the general formation right now. And that general formation is very jagged. Buying at the 8230 levels, selling at the 85 levels. So I would wait for that. All right, folks, that's it for me. I'll see you on the platforms.